Hi everybody, Kevin here. Welcome to the Claremont Classic Garage. What we're going to do now is uh, start fitting these quarter panels so we can uh, get them installed. This one here is the right side. So we're going to start by drilling some spot welds and getting this old piece of the inner out. I put a 964th pilot hole through each spot weld. Now I'm going to go with a step drill and just start slowly going up, up, up and jiggling on this until it starts to come apart. So we don't have to drill uh, bigger than we need to to get the thing off. Now we just start working it easy with a, a putty knife and a small hammer. I've gotten these three popped already. And you just keep working your way up and down. Some of them we might have to drill a little bit more. Um, you just can't force it because once you start warping and distorting the metal, that's when you get in trouble. And the more of them you get popped, the more it is to start wiggling the thing around and the rest of them start popping real easily. All the spot welds are busted now, but you still have to go easy because there's so much seam sealer and caulking and stuff in here. Even though all the spot welds are broken, the thing is still stuck like crazy. So we're just going to carefully work it back and forth till we get it free. There, it's free. Now I guess in reality we could have taken this apart first and cut a piece out of here to repair our wheelhouse. But then we would have been trying to fill this hole completely with weld because our, our spots would have lined up, understand? Um, and that's what I was trying to avoid. But if it was a larger area, that may have been a, a, a wise decision. But anyway, for what we were doing, I think we did it the right way. So now just a little hammer and dolly work and this flange will be good. And then we can, we can plug weld it back to the car. Well, as you can see, we'll definitely be doing some um, rust preventative work in here. I think what happens is water wicks up through these little, these little rev nuts or whatever they are that hold the bumper and it, and it runs all down through here and causes these problems. When I put these back in, there's going to be a lot of sealant applied to them. Next, we're going to trim this off. Next, we're going to trim it across here. Now we're going to drill these spot welds down the remains of the tail panel and get that out of here. I just found this. Look at that. You can see right through. That's a void. No wonder the thing is all rusty inside. Uh, we can nip this in the bud. That's not a big deal at all, but that's the stuff with mass-produced cars. Um, that's why they rust. Now, same like the other ones, we'll start working it bit by bit with the hammer and a putty knife. All right, well, we got all the junk trimmed off it, and I've sat it on there. Ta-da! It fits. So now what we have to do is cut it to height and then we're going to flange the panel that's on the car. The panel on the car is cut three inches below this line. So we're going to put a flange on it, a depressed flange, and we're going to cut this one two and five eighths below this line and that'll give us a nice overlap of three eighths of an inch that we can do our work along here and still have a little bit of the flange to work within. All right, well, we're gaining on it. Other stuff we have to do, you can see here how it, when it goes over, it really tightens up that door gap there. And even though it's okay, we need the panel to move back a little bit because we need it to fold over the back properly. So that's why we're going to put a little nick in this here. And then this flange here will just bend it in ever so slightly. As well as putting the flange on here. We want this thing, all surfaces of it, to be on the same uh, plane, I guess, in the three dimensions of space that they were before. So we're going to go ahead now and flange this. So this is our flanging tool. You can see by the jaws of it, it does exactly what it's called. It's going to put a little stepped flange in here so that it's almost like, a, I guess if it was wood, you'd call it shiplap. 
uh, and that'll allow our new panel to basically sit flush with the surface of this. It makes it a heck of a lot easier for filling and getting everything to fit properly. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You just put it on and you just give it a squeeze and you just work your way down the end of it. But it takes two hands, so I'll be back. There you go. You can see our flange put across. Now I'm going to test fit it and make sure that the finished edge of our panel is just below there. Because it does us no good if we flange it and then it sits up here. So you can see we'll have to take just a tiny bit off. But that's no big deal. At this point I'm not worrying about it. I'll That'll be a, a kind of a final adjustment type thing. So what we have to do right now is get this end fit. So you can see here I, I need to cut it back. A little bit more so it's not bottoming out on there and then we'll like I said nip this and flange the original sheet metal back in a little bit so we've got something to weld to but it's not going to um, keep the panel this way we want the panel back that way where it's supposed to be now we're going to use our lineman's pliers like we did before to just bend this back like that see all the way down and that'll allow us our overlap yet still leave us something to weld to that's better so with pushing that back now you can see we've got our door gap back that's good this fits nicely along here and now on the back here where's my magic marker It's climbing up over the original panel a bit there. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to mark right there where my panel comes to. And then we can measure down from there and trim this off once I take it off. And then what I'm probably going to have to do is this here, this is one place where I can't really, you know, get it sitting on top of itself properly. But we're just going to have to maybe mash this in a little bit with a hammer. So I can get this panel, I can get this panel in where it's supposed to be. But that's not uh, too major of a deal. Well, that's just peachy. Um, I still need to take a little bit off of there. That's not a problem. Uh, to answer my question, yes, these cars are welded by robots. This car and the car that I took the quarter panels off were not even the same year. But yet, look, all the spot welds are right on top of each other. Robots, wow. I'm used to them old 70s cars that were welded up by guys that went out for a few beers at lunchtime. And there's this one here. There might be one over here. Uh, they were pretty crazy. But, uh, yeah, this is really darn nice. So, well, uh, I have to mark it for the, final, for the final trimming across here. I'll get that trimmed down. Um, like I said, I want to trim this back in here and we'll get this thing final fit done. And wow, it can go on. Gosh darn, look at that. And we're going to have just a really nice little, little seam here to fix. This is working out pretty well, I'd say. Here we go. We're going to get started on the left side now. First thing I got to do is trim this bit off the bottom. Now we're going to trim off this end like we did on the other side. Now we're going to drill some spot welds. I've marked them all. We'll drill a pilot and then go through with the step drill like we did on the other side. Eight more spot welds in here. Then we'll be able to get this hunk of inner fender out. Now I'll take the putty knife or scraper and start working it and getting these things popped. And then this thing should come right out. It will be stuck a little bit. You can see there's seam sealer in there holding these two panels together. But that shouldn't be too much of a problem once I get it moving. Now I get this old bread knife. And we just work um, in here between the two layers. And get that sealer separated. And this thing should come right off. All the spot welds across here are popped. That's not nothing attached there. That's all we're getting on it. Again, there, I've got it freed from around the gas door. Now I'm dealing with all the sealer that's down and around here. 
you can't force it because you'll end up distorting the actual skin. And uh, we don't want to do that because I'm not that good with hammers and dollies to get it back. So we'll just keep patiently working it back and forth. And I might be able now to reach down in there with my knife and cut some of it. There we go. Now we can start getting this cleaned up. So here's our patch panel. We finally got all the other stuff free of it. We uh, cleaned off all the old seam sealer and junk. Um, I've got one little rust spot to fix there. And there, look at that. The same hole to the inside of the car. Just like our other side. <laughs> I guess there's the sealer that's supposed to be in that void. Unreal. So anyway, we're going to take it around to the other side now and, and start fitting it on and see where we're going to cut the top and where we're going to flange it, etc. There she is sat in place. It looks better already. Now I'm going to do some thinking what I'm going to do across the top here. Because of this, I had to I had to cut this panel up a little higher than the other one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to nip the other panel off about here and I'm going to flange it so it goes under this one. Um, it's not the most ideal way to do it, but that's the way we're going to have to do it on this side. I've got our flange across. Now you can see right around here the top of the gas door. I can't really get it flanged, but that's okay. Um, we can do a little work in there with some filler and, and it should be okay. Um, now all I have to do is knock back the door jam a little bit on the body like we did on this side and this panel should fit on perfectly. That's pretty good. We've got a good door gap down. It, uh, let's see how it fits at the back. Yeah, fits, fits right where it's supposed to at the back. Um, the only thing I've got to do is it's there's some sealer and stuff. I got to get all that crap up in there cleaned out, and there may be a little bit of a burr on the back of this panel, it's because this this joint is not not sitting nicely, like I would like to see. But um, it's certainly uh, promising, so we'll pull it back off and uh, work up in there a little bit. So there we have it. Now I got to take it off again. So now we can uh, brush prime the inside of both quarter panels. And what else I have to do is this has got just a tiny little ding in it. I'm going to just ever so slightly tap it out a bit with the dolly and see if I can get that fixed. And when I was trying to get that in or out, I just dinged it from the inside right here. So I'll knock that down with a hammer and dolly. But um, yeah, aside from that, our panel fits pretty good, I'd say. Pretty happy with that. Oh, and I'm going to do a little, just a little more uh, grinding down here so I can weld. Our panels are all ready to go on now. I just have to come out uh, later tonight, probably in the first intermission of the hockey game. Once this primer has dried, put a second coat of primer on the inside of it so it's good and protected. And I've got uh, right here on each side a little void to fill with some sealant. And uh, we'll be ready to put these things on tomorrow. So I guess that's it for this episode. Um, we've got everything all prepared up. You can see the quarter, the inner quarters. We've we've treated all the all the bare metal. Everything is ready to go. So um, the next time you see me, we'll be putting these things on for keeps. And uh, that'll be the fun part. Me and welders and body metal usually turns into a disaster. But hey, the Lord hates a coward. Anyway, tomorrow should be a big day around here. So uh, make sure you smack the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get a notification when the next video comes up because you don't want to miss this. Anyway, uh, this is Kevin checking out from the Claremont Classic Garage. Thanks and so long.